well. So let's get started. I did a little drawing of the butterfly with my light green hard pastel based on my value study and I came in with a variety of past hard pastels to create the background colors and just little touches of color. I don't want to lay a lot of pastel on my paper. This is a UART 400 I'm working on, but you could be working on pastel mat or Lux Archival or any paper that will take water. I would tape it around on all four sides so that it doesn't buckle. So I'm getting going now with my 70% alcohol. I always have a paper towel and a very soft watercolor brush, just synthetic, not an expensive one. I'm starting in the, with the light colored areas and what I do also is wipe my brush off as I move from color to color so that I'm not smearing color around and making mud. But light colors to dark colors. I put the dark around the edges because I thought this subject would be pretty with a sort of a dark vignette around it. And I thought this is the perfect opportunity to do that now. Just before I do that, too much more cleaning out my brush. And I want to get this butterfly done. And I'm just sort of locking in the colors now. I'm absolutely not worrying about perfectionism here. I did a very quick little drawing, but I have my value study and I have my reference and I know where I'm going with this painting. And uh, I just want to sort of lock in this underpainting that was put on in just real simple strokes. Nothing very uh, detailed at all. So I'm going to show you how to create a very soft muted background starting in this way. But then also I'm going to be using a sponge which will really soften. It'll let that dry and I'll be back in a minute. That's dry to the touch. Okay, so I'm going to start with the background. I'm coming in with some of these greens, dark to light, as my palette is laid out, which is always the general rule. These are some soft pastels. The, the first ones I was using were the new and new hard pastels. These are a variety of Terry Ludwig, Diane Townsend, Sennelier. Um, I try a lot of different soft pastels. My favorite is Terry Ludwig which is what I'm using right now. The thing about the sponge is that it does lift off some color. When you rub with your finger, you're really just working it into the surface of the board. When you're working with a sponge, you are knocking a little bit of it off. I'm using the very lightest touch now. I'm practically just skipping over it. And uh, I like the effect of that, where it's not quite as heavily rubbed in as it would be with my finger. I'm going around some of these shapes. I can overlap them. It's not a big deal. Don't try to be too precious. At this stage of any painting, I'm never too precious with it because I have my thoughts about it that I've gathered. I've done my bit of research with my value study and I've looked at it again doing this underpainting. So I've got a lot of information in my head right now about what goes where in this painting. And if you do enough preliminary work, like a drawing to figure out placement and composition, and then a value study, sometimes even a color study, and by the time you're ready to, to go in with these soft pastels, you've got so much information about the scene in your brain that it almost, not exactly, but it almost paints itself. I'm going to come back in here with a little more color. And I think I may take a clean finger, so just with a dry pinky. I'm going to actually leave the center. This is where a pinky, a finger, can come in and um, do something that it's more difficult to do with the sponge, which is be very exact about 
where you want to smear it. So I'm leaving that center so that it's a little bit brighter. I can do a little skim over it to knock it back a little bit. These were the three values. I started with that that was sort of neutrally. Neutrally, that's a new word. Just a paler yellow. Then I came in with something that's real warm and intense. And now I'm coming in with this lighter one to just balance it out a little bit. Okay, ready to come back with the light for the flowers. I've selected a few different lights. One is blue, one is pink, and one is white white. White comes in many colors. Every color family has a lightest value that you could call white. It's not until you compare them to each other that you see the difference. So rather than just go for the white white, the whitest white I can find in my palette box, I chose a variety of whites because it's much more interesting. So I'm just creating some shapes. Again, I'm not really worrying about details. This is sort of a distant scene, and uh, even these flowers up close are not that in that sharp focus. I'm going to come back in with the blue, and it's actually a little brighter in intensity. And so I'm coming into some of the front flowers. Just being real general. And I'm thinking about the nature of this flower and what uh, idiosyncrasies or characteristics it has that makes this flower look like this flower. It has the little uh, dots that have some little, almost a star shape, little spikes coming out of them. So if you just be sure to throw in a few of these spikes on a little cluster around the edges, it will read as this little bundle of flowers. Now I'm going to come back in with the white. Little bits of brightness. And I'm putting it sort of in the center where it helps show that that's where the light is hitting and it helps create a feeling of volume and convex convex uh, form and it's just a different kind of mark making now I'm not keep trying to keep it as smooth I'm sort of a little more directed and a little more tapping you can hear it to get release uh, some of that pastel and by the way, this is a Terry Ludwig that's soft. This is the point where, for these finishing type marks, you want a nice soft pastel. I pull it away in the direction, the opposite direction of the object, to create a little smear. Or sometimes I do it, here I'll do it on the white part, it creates a little sparkle, almost as if it's glowing. You don't have to do all of them. Leave some hard-edged and some soft-edged, and it makes for something that's a little more interesting. Put a couple in here. At the end, I will assess, like I always do, whether or not I have all the soft edges and hard edges that I need. That's the time where I go over everything and ask myself, do I have the darkest darks? Do I have the lightest lights? Do I have a variety of edges? and I reassess. All right, let's do the butterfly and fine tune the background. I think I am going to do some of the orange first because I think that's easier. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of red. It's easy to come back over something with the dark color, with the black. So I'm putting in a little red that's it's darker than it should be, but I'm going to be able to then just like I work dark to light on everything, I'll be able to come back over that with lighter and lighter. So now I'm gonna skim over that and the other areas, a little bit lighter. I can always go back in. Again, I have tons of tooth left still. So I'm going over with that medium orange that I chose. 
I'm going to come right over that. You can combine colors. You can blend colors with pastels. If people think that they have to have just such a huge variety of pastels, which it's better to have, but you can always lay one color over the next and glaze colors over each other. So now I'm glazing this lighter orange right over it. And I'm starting to, I'm looking at my photo and starting to lay it down in the way that these wings splay out. And in that pattern, it goes a little lighter and a little lighter. Now I'm going to come in with a lighter yellow to skim over. This is that first yellow I used in the background. And let's see what I can do with this. fun. I've chosen a hard new pastel in black. I'm also using my mall stick, which is a long pole. It has a rubber tip. It comes apart into three sections, and I taped on the end of a hanger so I can hook it on the end of my easel or on a board, and I can then draw easily because my hand is balanced. It's working fine. Oops. Got carried away a little. Even while I'm working on this, I'm not so worried about it being perfect right now because I know I can come back and clean it up with the background. Now I'm really, I'm doing some drawing and cutting in and editing where I need to. And here's this little head. I see a little white dot on the top of it, which is either light or a dot on the top of his head. And then I'm going to come in where I see, actually I think this needs to come up a little bit higher. I'm going to extend this. That's better. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to create this wide edge here and bring it out a little bit as I do it. It's these little billowy shapes. Now I'm not trying to do a bot botanical drawing. I'm not worrying so much about it being as accurate as could possibly be. And you are absolutely free to do that. I just don't care to. But I want you to do what makes you happy. To fill that in. Now I'm going to create this shape in here. It's scalloped on the outer edge. And let's create this darker shape here. I'm using the side of this little new pastel, hard pastel the broad tip to make wider lines and the thin corner to make narrower lines. So it works really well. Let's see, let's get this first little line. I'm using just the edge. This one comes from outside. It gets close here and then it comes back in like that. And then this comes off of it. And then another one. And then there's a few in here which I'll clean up with the color, with the orange. Let's do it down here. This comes across. I'm going to make just a straight line that comes across. But I can see that that actually billows a little bit in the opposite direction from the outer edge of the wing. Just creating that little design. Now I'm going to come in with these lines. This one comes across here and to the edge. I'm going to find another corner on here. 
that was getting worn down. And again, it comes through there into the edge. This one comes up and in, and then off of that is that, and that. And I think I'll throw in another, or maybe I'll make an edge. I'm going to separate this guy from the flowers. Coming back in with that green while I'm cleaning up. Now I can come back in with a hard pastel and get into these little areas. Let's see what I have to do up here to clean it up. I'm going to take a soft pastel. By taking a soft one, excuse my head, I'm just placing it and just twirling it a little bit. Um, it's easier to do it with a soft pastel than with a hard pastel. So let's get back into this background a little bit. And what I think I'm going to do is throw in a little touch of a pinky lavender, just because I like it. And in my mind, no painting is com that has green in it is complete until it has a little bit of lavender in it also. Some of the, the actual colors I had before, I want to lighten that up a little bit around the butterfly. I should come back in and put this little light in my photo. I'm going to put some light spots that indicate maybe some other flowers like this back in the garden. I'm just feeling my way around and deciding what I want to go where. There's no rules at this point. I'm doing what my painting is telling me it needs. actually going to come in with a little bit of this navy because I think it's a little more interesting than, than that kind of dead green. Yeah, that's prettier. It's richer. <laughs> 